Yeah, let me let me take a breath here. Hey guys, my name is Tyler Pittman and I'm from Pittsburgh, Ohio, and I'm here to show you the one of one Chevrolet Ferretta prototype car. The car was actually built to kind of show the Camaro guys and the F body guys that they could actually still do a uh, muscle car variant in a front wheel drive vehicle. So. Uh, they kind of threw this together and, and, you know, put the body cladding on it, put some vents in the hood, uh, widened it up a little bit, gave it a, a pretty aggressive engine um, to be able to kind of appeal to those guys. And they gave it the name Ferretta to kind of hint at the fact that that was going to be replacing the F body. Um, so they made three prototype cars. Uh, there was this one, there was an all-wheel drive V8 car, and there was actually a twin turbo all-wheel drive 3.3 liter V6 car. Um, this was the only one that had gotten really the full treatment of the custom interior. Um, the other V8 variant that had the all-wheel drive system, um, it had similar body cladding, but that car was actually nowhere to be found. So um, this and the other car are the only two survivors that are really left. The engine was desi designed by a Suzu. Uh, it is said to be around 3.5 liters. Uh, they didn't really give any actual you know, displacement numbers on it. They didn't give any power numbers. Um, None of that stuff was released when they had sold it at the Barrett Jackson Auto Auction. Um, they just kind of gave that, that general number. Um, it's an all aluminum uh, dual overhead cam V8. Um, it does not share any um, sort of similarities with the North Star or anything that you would think that it would. Um, it's actually just a full one off uh, design here. So back in 1987, uh, Chevrolet was actually trying to develop a few prototype cars to be able to show people that on this platform, they could still do what they're wanting to do because uh, Ford had actually released the probe in hopes of replacing the Mustang with that. So the Beretta was kind of uh, an influence to be able to replace the F bodies and get rid of those gas guzzling V8s and you know kind of go in a different direction. So uh, what they ended up having done was they built three different prototype cars. Um, they had an all-wheel drive V8 car that had a similar style to this. Um, there's not much about it. Uh, it was kind of a problematic car when they when they had built it. Um, it was set up to be more mounted like a uh, you know rear wheel drive engine and then being front wheel drive. I, I think it had a 350 in it. Um, and then the next car was a, actually a 3.3 liter twin turboed uh, V6 all wheel drive car. Uh, it still had a pretty modest appearance. It was still you know looked like a base model Beretta. They put a slight cowl in the hood. They had uh, Buick uh, Regal GS wheels on it. And then um, it actually had the rear end unit out of a Pontiac 6000 uh, all-wheel drive STE. And uh, that car was also still five-speed. Uh, the interior on it was also untouched. Uh, this car kind of got the full treatment. Uh, they had a Suzu design them this 3.5 liter, uh, well, around 3.5 liter, uh, dual overhead cam, all aluminum V8. Um, from what I found on it, uh, it shares a lot of electrical and a lot of... Uh, you know, ignition and, and fuel injection from, from foreign cars. Um, I actually had to replace the two modules up here to be able to uh, keep this thing alive because the diodes inside of the original ones had uh, burn out. So I had to do some research, run through some schematics and see what I could find to actually use as a replacement. And those came off of a 95 uh, Infiniti Q45. So um, the starter had also burned out at that one point and uh, I ended up using a starter out of a 3400 powered car. Uh, bolted right up the the spacing and everything was perfect for it and uh, it actually cranks the car a little bit healthier than it did with the old school big starter um, they had fitted it with ac uh, you know kept pretty much all the creature comforts um, they did not put cruise control in it but what they were trying to do was show that hey this can be a production car we can make something like this happen um, i think that they had this engine designed in hope that they could replace the 350 small block which would be the main reason why they you know, um, advertised Chevrolet so heavily on the top of it. So uh, overall, um, you know, they didn't have any, any sort of power numbers whatsoever. There was no horsepower ratings, no uh, torque ratings, nothing like that. It has a very, very vague amount of information. Um, from what I found, there was uh, part numbers that are stamped onto a couple of the parts, like the cam cover here, uh, 
which actually shares the last five digits of a part number that I'd found for the computer. Um, the transmission, it, it looks very similar to an Isuzu four speed that was in the uh, um, Fieros, but it's actually a five speed and uh, there, there just aren't any, any parts available for it. I have not been able to identify that transmission either. So for the most part, as far as uh, I know, and as, as far as I've um, you know, learned about this thing, this would be the only one of these engines in existence. Uh, and I would say same with the transmission, all specifically designed to be able to fit into this car. So aesthetically, they were trying to go for a really aggressive kind of track look, uh, you know, kind of to give the people the look of, of you know, muscle. I, I think that's kind of what they were going for. So uh, they gave it that extra uh, lip on the front of it to kind of give that front end more of a stacked look to it. Um, they ended up bringing the body lines from the bottom here through into the fender and up over the fender wells. Um, and to do that, they actually set the wheels out further by changing the spindles and control arms from what I've seen. Unfortunately, from being down in Florida from the previous owner, she has seen some a little bit of rust and a little bit of uh, cracking in the paint, but overall everything's still pretty solid. Um, the differences between this and the normal Z26 or GTZ uh, body kit would be that the side moldings are actually molded into the door. They made them one piece with the doors here, and then it continues on up through here, uh, where on the normal Berettas that would cut off there, and it would actually be a whole separate body piece. Um, so on the back wheels, they just put a spacer behind the wheel bearing to actually bring that wheel out to set it with that flare. Um, other than that, really, uh, they, they just shaved the rear marker lights here. They had put the F here instead of having the B. They shaved it down and, and gave it the, the Ferretta name. And then uh, they threw dual exhaust on it to kind of add to more of that, once again, muscle car look. The trim around the windows, they did this kind of charcoal gray color, um, which this and the twin turbo all wheel drive concept car actually have that same colored trim. Um, and the wheels are two piece BBS wheels. I actually uh, took them off just to check them out and see what they were all about. And they're welded around the uh, far outer side there. And I'll actually show you with a card here to show that that has a separation between the drum and the face of the wheel. So um, it's just kind of a neat, neat thing they did with BBS there to get the wheels on this car. Um, and as far as like the inside of the car goes, um, you can open the door up here. They basically just used the regular old Beretta interior. They changed the seats out and did, uh, you know, the custom upholstery on those. They put the, um, I like to just call them like pads on the doors and the rear quarter panel pieces. It shares the same dash as a regular Beretta. The steering wheel, from what I could find, looks like a uh, uh, probably about an 80s Chevrolet, maybe a Chevette or Cavalier steering wheel that they put a different center cap in to say future. Um, and then they used a different shift boot on the shifter. Other than that, it, it shares all the same things with uh, the regular old Beretta. Um, and then last to note is that they also shaved on the uh, emblem on the dash to say Ferretta also. So this car uh, had actually made it to the Beretta Fest uh, back in 2018 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And while it was there, it was actually accompanied by the other prototype car, the one that I've mentioned a few times now, uh, the 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 one. And while we were checking everything out, just to see kind of what the two cars were all about, see which one may have been built first and, and where they were built and this and that, um, we'd looked at the build date on the door. Uh, it actually still has what would have been the tag that the car would have had if it would have been a production vehicle, like uh, just a normal Beretta GT. So uh, it has a build date of 10 of 86. Well, the Berettas in 87 were only used as fleet vehicles. So the GT package really wasn't even available uh, at that time. So the fact that it even has the GT badges on the door panels is kind of a strange, uh, strange thing to have. So I've decoded that VIN a little bit and uh, it actually came back as just being, uh, it was kind of a darker blue color, uh, you know, Beretta GT. It had a 2.8 liter uh, V6 in it with a Getrag 282 five-speed transmission. So uh, they basically just pulled all that out and then uh, I'm not sure where they sent it to, but uh, whoever had built this car, uh, you know, had custom made that, that drivetrain to go right back into it, so.
it sound right, boy. 